here with uh, Eric Westman, who's a medical doctor and the president-elect of the American Society of Bariatric Physicians. And you're like uh, perhaps the world's number one expert on low-carbohydrate diets. Well, or at least I one of the top people, right? Okay. <laughs> Why? How did you, did you become interested oh. in that? Well, okay. at Duke University, we started a lot of the low-carbohydrate science that's been done in the last 10 to 15 years and a lot of other people now have done that science so I mean I, I kind of sheepishly I don't want to take the honor of being the world's expert because other doctors have known about this a long time all I did is really help formalize yeah. the, the information and well then bring it up to the scientific level of credibility mm -hmm. so the knowledge has been there a lot in fact we're at the meeting here in Las Vegas the American Society of Bariatric Physicians and a lot of doctors here use low carbohydrate diets in their practice. Yeah, I was a bit amazed actually during this conference that speaker after speaker was mentioning uh, that uh, that low carb is the best way to eat if you're uh, if you got obesity. And if you go to other conferences, even other conferences on on obesity, that's that's not the case. It's it's not even mentioned. Right. So how come there is such a big difference? So much more. Uh, knowledge perhaps here about low carbohydrate diets. Yeah, well, of course it's complicated. <laughs> um, I think right now there's a knowledge transfer deficit where the randomized trials that have been done, the new evidence has not been really heard or listened to or, or been in front of all of these other organizations. Um, and that, that'll happen with time. I, I, so lots of I'm big trials showing s uh, significantly more weight loss with the low-carb oh right. diet for obese people. Well, right? just about every prediction about low-carb diets has been found to, be tr found, found to be incorrect. For example, people predicted you couldn't lose weight by low-carb diet because you didn't talk about calories. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to talk about calories. Right. You, you can talk about carbs and people limit their caloric intake by eating less. You know. Yeah. They predicted that the cholesterol would get worse when, in fact, the good cholesterol goes up more on a low-carb yeah, diet. which is good. Which is a good thing, yeah. Right. So uh, the science is pretty solid that low-carbohydrate diets are healthy, not only for, for obesity, but for just health in general. Mm. So the science is beginning to catch up in the last decade or so yeah. with big trials showing this. But you've been doing it for even longer, like 15 years almost, with how many patient, patients now? Right. How many? Well, you know, we started with, with uh, you know, 50 patients, then 200 patients in, in studies, mm -hmm. and now I have a clinical practice at Duke University right. where I have thousands of patients. Thousands. Yeah. Now, I don't collect the information at the same level of detail as the research. No, but, but you see them all. Well, that's right. So what's, what's your general, uh, general impression of what, what, how's it working for them? Well, it works really well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, teaching a knew, knew you'd say that teaching a low <laughs> carbohydrate diet is really easy, yeah. and for those people who follow it, it works really well. Now, not everyone follows it, and there, not everyone has right. great success, and that's really where the research should focus: yeah. is how to make it even better, yeah. more sustainable, instead of ignoring the fact that it works. <laughs> so, I mean, you've been doing it for a long time now. What what is the biggest problems for people? doing low carb, what's the, m the most common mistakes uh, or, or difficulties for people in following well, it? I, I think it's a, it's a paradigm shift idea so that if you carry over the idea that fat in the diet is bad for you into the low carbohydrate world or, or yeah. low carb eating, it's not as satisfying, it's not as delicious, so it's harder to sustain over time. So you can't do, do low carb and low fat at, at the same time? Exactly. Don't do low carb, low fat. That, that is not how the low carb doctors who, who knew all about this for the last 150 years practiced it. And actually, the, so the fear of fat is the dietary fat, I think, is the root cause for, for so many people being told that the diet is bad, yeah. that you know, you're going to kill yourself. Right. And, um, and it's just, so it's just, it's wrong. I mean, we were taught the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, but and when I say we, it's, it's the whole U.S. population. It's, sure. it's the doctors, the nurses, the dietitians. Yeah, so everybody's been believing in, right. in the fat is, is bad right. theory, 
even but, me once. <laughs> but that'll change. You know, remember the, the story of, of um, how it was figured out that the Earth went around the sun instead of the sun going around the Earth. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's a fabulous story, and it, it's really brilliant how they figured it out. And I mean, so you imagine, you know, the sun goes around the Earth, right? Yeah. Look, out, look out the window. Yeah, yeah, right? it's obvious. <laughs> like eating fat makes you fat. Right, it's, it's so obvious. It's obvious. Well, but wait a minute. The sun doesn't go around the Earth. No. The Earth goes around the sun. Oops. Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a, now that teaching is 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 happening. But the fear fear of fat, the feeling that you're you're harming yourself by eating fat, is so strong yeah. that it affects the psychology of it. Um, and so that's really something that has to change. Yeah, so uh, in your practice, you, you, I'm sure you discuss patients with other physicians from time to time. Yes. What kind of, um, um, what do they, they think about you treating patients with, a, with strict low-carb diets, uh, high-fat yeah. diets? Well, I have to say it's, it's changed since uh, over the last several years. The first round of the low-carb studies that came out around 2004, mm -hmm. there was an enormous pushback from doctors yeah. and, and, and media and all that. And now the persistent low-carb science has been there and uh, with the new Atkins book that came out last year right. and in the U.S. has sold about 500,000 copies that's already. That's pretty good. And you're one of the authors. Well, I'm one of we, the authors on the book, uh, that's mention. right. Uh, new Atkins for a new you, it's called. It's a good book. Well, the, there's been no scientific pushback. And, and no medical pushback to, that I'm aware of, and mm -hmm. I assume I would get the heat, so yeah, to speak. Sure. Uh, but so in my own practice, other doctors are convinced when we share patients. Right. But it's a, so the science doesn't seem to they matter. They believe what they see, huh? They, and so they believe, well, but then you get into the problem of the sun <laughs> going around the earth. So you have to combine the research knowledge, the theories, and the practical mm -hmm. observation. And I mean, it brings up a recent case I had of a gentleman who has heart disease. He has coronary disease documented eight years ago on a heart test looking at the arteries. Yeah. He started a low carbohydrate diet four years ago in my, my clinic. And he had, did really well, had no chest pain. Now he had chest pain recently, okay. which is a possible sign of, of the heart problem coming back. Right, yeah. He went and to that the hospital. can happen, that's common, right? Hmm? He went to the hospital, had a, a another test to look at the arteries, and in fact, the doctors were predicting that, oh, you're doing that diet with all that fat, we know it's going to be worse. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, you know, we can predict it's going to be worse. He had the test done, no change in the heart disease, the, the coronary artery blockage for eight years. And, well, now it doesn't say that, that the diet doesn't, um, fixes it, or I mean, it's one case. Yeah, but it's only one it case. It shows but that if everyone, if everyone's going to get heart disease from the diet, well, that's not true, no. right? And and everyone, that's the current belief is that everyone's well, going to get heart the, disease. We have the Shai study, two-year uh, Israeli study for uh, on, right. on low-carb diets, where people got the advice to eat low-carb for two years, right. and they uh, checked their coronary arteries, uh, sorry, their, their carotid, uh, carotid right. arteries uh, with the ultrasound before and after, and it actually decreased the amount of plaque in, yes. the, in the arteries. Yeah, that was which a, is a landmark study. It's like the, the first and only one to, to test that, I guess? Yes. With, with, with the a low very low-carb With a very low-carb diet? Yeah. So the first and only one actually showed, the, showed an improvement. Right. That's pretty big. That's fantastic. <laughs> And yet, nobody really talks about it much. I, I have a, a colleague who says, uh, uh, we publish the low-carb studies and then everyone ignores them. Yeah. <laughs> That's another strange phenomenon. But not everybody, because uh, going back to this meeting now for, for the American Society of Bariatric Physicians, these, these are, are doctors who treat obese patients right. all the time, right? Right. Every day. Every day. Yeah. And they're, most of them, them seem to be into low-carb. Yeah, I think we did a survey a couple of years ago of the membership of the ASBP, uh -huh. and I, I, almost a half of the doctors use some form of carbohydrate. Yeah, and that's a few years ago, you say. Yeah, I would yeah, guess it's more now. Changing, yeah, 
because I've been r- walking around talking to people and they all seem to be, I mean, not everybody, but like 90%. Yeah. Well, the, the main teachers here at ASBP over the last several years have been using low carbohydrate diets. Mary Vernon in yeah. Kansas, Alan Rader in oh, Boise, yeah. Idaho. Mm-hmm. They all use some form of carbohydrate restriction. Well, I think it's very interesting. Do, uh, maybe this is like a, a sign of things to come. Well, I hope so. Yeah, you know, it, 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 even though, again, another you know, obesity is, you know, causes billions of dollars of expenditures for this yeah. country. Yeah. One in three adults are obese, one in six children are obese. So when the country yeah, really, no really wants to fix it, these are the doctors to ask how to do it. Right. And it's interesting that the people, the, the doctors who actually treat obese patients all the time using dietary means, for example, they're mostly into low carb. Yes. But when you go to other meetings where people are only talking about you know, research, uh, surgery, drugs, they maybe don't really know much about this. Well, th- the paradigm view that fat is bad and the diet has blocked the research funding yes. into the higher fat diets. Mm-hmm. So if you talk to researchers who are funded in the current paradigm, mm-hmm. they, they're not going to know about it. And right. there's so much information today that most researchers can't keep up with other people's research. Oh, well, so, mm-hmm. so we need things like meta-analyses and people reading the, the science and synthesizing it. And, uh, and that, that's what happens at this kind of meeting. Yeah, but there is quite a lot of studies on low carb now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and you've been uh, part of a lot of them. Yes. Quite a few of them anyway. Uh, showing that uh, diabetic patients, for example, can improve their disease and, and lose weight. Yes. Yeah. That you know, it's, to me, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah we know it's true, right? But it's nice to have a study showing it. It's nice to have a study showing Well, there are a few, but I think yours is perhaps the biggest and best, is it? Well, uh, yeah, and even then, it's relatively small yeah. when you look at drug studies that have tens of thousands of people. Yeah, so it's tiny compared to that. Having 100 people. But you've been uh, doing studies uh, looking at other kind of diseases, too. Oh, sure. Like what? Well, the pilot studies we've done using low-carbohydrate diets include um, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Yeah. Um, the, the difficulty conceiving children for, for, well, f- for women. Right, so polycystic ovary syndrome is a major cause of infertility. Right, for and women. what did your pilot study show? Well, when we put five women with PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome on it, the yeah. diet, they lost weight and actually two of the women became pregnant. So and they couldn't be become pregnant before. Before, right. So that, that's pretty good, 40%. That's fantastic. Tiny study, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they uh, thought that it worked quite well for yeah. them. They were quite happy. Yeah. Um, fatty liver. Mm-hmm. There's this uh, also the fat in the food, fat on the body right. mistake. Fat in, in the liver actually comes from carbohydrate yeah. in the food. Yeah. So with liver biopsy proof, we put, again, about five people on the diet over six months, and fatty liver went away. And that yeah. study actually had uh, pieces of liver examined under the microscope to prove that. So that irritable bowel syndrome yes, goes away. Yes, also a huge problem, right? It is. Yeah. GERD, heartburn, reflux, yeah. uh, or um, heartburn symptoms mm-hmm. uh, go away in about three days. Most but I- is that for all people or for most people? Well, um, in my clinical experience, it, it's almost uniform across yeah. the board. So I meet some people who, who feel that they get more problems uh, starting a. Well, they feel that eating a fat, uh, a, a high fat diet, gives them more problems with uh, with heart heartburn. Really? Uh, few okay. anyway. Few. I don't think it's the majority. I think it's just. Uh, a minority, but still. Uh, okay. You haven't, you don't see that? No, uh, and heartburn medications are one of the first ones I get to take away yeah. from people because they don't need them. Um, you know, that would be a great question for a survey of the uh, low carb internet groups that are out there. Yeah, uh, I, I did that actually <laughs> a few years ago and uh-huh. I got mixed results, but, but most people were improved. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Do you see any problems with with low carb, like people becoming ill in some way? Well, you know, the, the low carb diet has thought to be a you know, um, treatment for obesity, you know, a weight loss diet, and it, using it for that, it's very effective, yeah. very healthy, and and counter to what people have been taught. But um, when so I, I really teach the diet as a lifestyle for anyone, not just as a weight loss kind of program. And I mean, there are some people who have hereditary tendencies toward gout or kidney stones, and those people need to be put on medication with, regardless of whether they're on this diet or, or other diets. So I think those are the areas for research in the future to fine tune the type of diet. Sure. But it's been nice to be here at this meeting, you know, uh, seeing the paradigm shift at work. Right? Don't well, you think it's happening? It's, it's fascinating. It is happening. And I think uh, a lot of the work that's been done in Sweden has uh -huh. been very helpful. And so I hope you can continue that. Sure, of course. Thanks very much. My pleasure. <laughs>